We wanted to welcome you to the webinar today. We're excited to have you and excited to talk again. We talked a few months uh, ago about the PAL, but we've had so much success with it and so much interest and so many sales that we wanted to talk about it again because it is such a unique, inexpensive, good product that's really been allowing guys out in the field to get jobs done faster for less expensive and wow their customers because of the functionality and features that usually you're paying a ton of money for. We offer in a small, inexpensive package. A couple things today before we get started. Make sure that if, please let me know if you can hear me. Alex is at the helm here doing the controls. If you can't hear me, please type in and let us know. Uh, just let us know if the audio quality is okay. The second thing is we are giving away a PAL device. Uh, in order to receive that, you have to stick around for the entire webinar. At the end of the webinar, we're going to post a link in the chat section. You will click on that link, fill out the information, and we will select a winner next week. So stick around for the entire webinar. And again, that will be in the chat box uh, for the service we use. Click on that, fill out the information, and we'll choose a winner next week for a free PAL unit. Like I said, this PAL, uh, Wigan, UHF, and Bluetooth-based product has really been a success. We've had a ton of installations of it. People are very happy with it. And some of the things that we're going to talk about today are ease of use. It is one of the easiest installed products that I've ever seen and works in pretty much every application. The cloud-based software, the app that allows you to use virtual credentials, and then just the overall functionality that now you can walk into a customer site and say, okay, for that pool gate or for that back gate or for the overhead door or whatever it may be, if it's a hard to reach place, I can put this device, the PAL device on it for really inexpensive. And then you're going to be able to, through the cloud, so connect to any internet connected tablet, smartphone or computer, make changes to this device, manage it, see a login report of who's coming and going all for very inexpensive, and that's, that's something that, that people want. That's, the cloud is kind of the big word in the industry right now, and you don't have to run and trench a bunch of wires because it's a cellular-based wireless system, and there's so many different options. So let's go through a couple of the different PAL options that we have right now so you can know that it is a full, rounded outline of products. A couple of things to keep in mind that any PAL device can be installed at a site. So let's say you, ha you have a site with a front gate and a back gate. And let's say on the front gate and back gate, they want to do UHF readers, okay, RFID readers with car tags. We have a PAL system that will do that. Let's then say they have a pool gate where they want to put a Wigan card reader. We have a PAL system that will do that as well. And then let's say they have a laundry room where they want a Bluetooth unit. We have a Bluetooth unit as well. All of those can be managed through the same cloud software. And I'll show you how that works here in just a minute. So you can mix and match the different PAL devices. So the PAL devices that we offer are, our most popular sellers are the Wigan. So this has a Wigan input, data zero, data one, and ground. It has a relay input, so you can actually track and monitor the status of the gate. And then you have a relay output to trigger your control, whatever it may be, your automatic gate, maglock, strike, whatever you want to use it for. And then you have uh, the two antennas. You've got a cellular antenna and you've got to have an RFID antenna. That is our best seller, the Wigan. Second best seller is the R PAL that works with the RFID kit. We've sold a lot of these, had a lot of success. That is a controller this same size with two prongs coming out the side of it where you will wire in the PAL RFID antenna. And then everything is localized. So a typical installation of a any access control, let's say any access control, let's say they have a pool gate where they want to put a card reader. Most of the time you're either going to have to say, okay, I can do standalone, which means everything is going to be in this card reader and you have no trackability whatsoever. You can't see who's coming and going and you have to enter in cards and hand them out and you don't, you, unless, you're, unless you have a spreadsheet, you don't know who has what card. You definitely don't know when they're coming and going. That's a typical answer for a pool gate or a hard to reach area for access control. Or you can say, okay, uh, I can give you uh, the main brains, whatever it may be, choose your, your preferred vendor that's going to do the thinking. Yes, this card is allowed, no, this card is not allowed. Those are expensive. The main access control system is expensive, and there's a thousand manufacturers out there. So you would do that and either hardwire to it or use some device to wirelessly communicate the card reader information back to the access control panel. But again, your cost is really added up in that, all for a pool gate or a laundry room door, or even a main gate. Even the main gate where they want uh, remote control access, 
you would have to put a receiver, and if they want to track who's coming and going, you're, after, you're gonna have to buy an expensive access control and then either find a way to trench and wire to that or use some so, sort of wireless device. So the bid that you're creating is slowly getting more and more expensive. The goal with the PAL product of families is you can now walk into a job and any application, whether it be a gate, a main gate that wants a card reader entrance or a keypad for entrance or uh, remote controls for entrance or an RFID reader for entrance or even phone access for an entrance with virtual credentials. You can say, I have the perfect device, choose the PAL that best suits that application. So let's say that they want handheld remotes to enter the gate. You would choose the PAL Wigan, you would wire in a Wigan receiver, which is inexpensive, hand out the remotes, and now they have cloud-based access control for the whole property or for that main gate, but they're tracking every single person who's going through that gate with their cloud-based access, okay? So that's something to keep in mind, and this is why this is so unique and so cool because the price point is amazing and the applications that this fits. You can walk into any job and confidently know that you are probably coming in less by about half than any of your competitors who are not bidding the PAL but are bidding traditional access control. Because A, you don't have to run any wires. There's no trenching required, no network. You don't have to mess with any of the network at all. And then B, the cost is so inexpensive. And then you're giving them tons of features that a lot of access control doesn't give them, which is the cloud-based. They don't have to have software loaded on individual computers. They could be here at my office and look at a gate that's in Florida, see who'd been coming and going, run a report, run a log. They can be, uh, they have full control of that system. And then on top of tracking and managing physical credentials, you can also do virtual credentials, which we will show you. Virtual credentials through a phone-based app, uh, which allow them to basically trigger the gate from anywhere that they are. So any questions so far? Again, I cannot talk enough about this. Uh, we've had applications where they're putting 20 on one site, uh, gates, combination of gates, doors, overhead doors, and they are extremely happy just because the installation time, here's the installation time. Power, which is going here, 12 through 24 volts DC. Your relay controls for whatever you're triggering, maglock, strike, whatever it may be. If you're going to do an input, a door monitor or a gate monitor so you can track the status of the gate or door and Wigan, wiring in your Wigan device and you're done. Then you power it up and you're done. One of the really nice things too is you do not have to get involved with any network guys. You don't need, there's no IP addresses, there's no DHCP, there's no, none of that is involved in this process. Because it is a cellular based device, as long as you have cell signal, you'll turn it on and you can see my lights here. As long as you have cell signal, it's gonna to connect to the cloud and then all the management is done through the cloud. I will tell you that if you if you're used, if you install cellular-based like telephone entry, for instance, the price of those monthly fees is not even comparable to how low this is. The, we charge yearly and it is next to nothing for the device. And again, we don't talk price, but you can reach out to your sales rep for that information. Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to jump over to the computer so I can show you all the hardware options. We've talked about them a little bit and show you the cloud-based software. Please stop me at any time and let me know any questions you have. Also, for anyone who's coming in a little bit late and didn't hear the beginning, stick around because we're giving away a PAL unit. At the end, we'll post a link in the chat box. Click on that, fill out your information, we'll announce the winner next week. Do we have a question? Yes, AT&T question mark? Oh, so the question was AT&T. Good question, I didn't address that. So the SIM card that is in here is a dual technology SIM card. It finds the strongest network between AT&T and T-Mobile and connects to them. So let's say, T-Mobile is the strongest at, on Wednesday. Something happens to the T-Mobile tower and AT&T is the strongest. It will automatically adjust to find the strongest network, okay? If we haven't really had any issues with, with cellular connection, you, you'll know if you're in a horrible area and it's not gonna work in an area with no service at all, but anywhere that you can get connectivity, this device is gonna be able to get connectivity. Good question, thanks for asking. Any other questions right now? Nope. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and we'll look at the software. So one of the things that we really like about this PAL system is that oftentimes uh, access control can be way too complex. We know that the main things that people want to do for access control is add users, delete users, run a report, 
uh, and, and set up a seven day timer. So that's what we've done with this PAL system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to PAL dash portal.pal-es.com, okay, and this link is on our website, and this is going to be a sign in. The way this is set up for admin rights is you as the installer are going to have your portal where you're going to see every single installation that you've ever done. So you'll have ABC Apartments, uh, the Jones Residence, every single PAL installation that you've done will show up in your portal, and at any time you can go in and edit and manage those. So let's say you get a call from the Jones Residence and they say, hey, uh, Mr. Gate Company, uh, my gate didn't open, it's broken. You can go into the system and say, well, you're, you're pushing a remote that's serial number 12345, that's not one of the remotes that you've saved in here as a transmitter that's allowed. Or, well, you're pushing uh, your virtual credential on your phone app, but you said don't let this user who's using their phone in after 5 p.m. and it's 6 p.m. So you can have full control all from sitting on your couch uh, of all your systems. Then your end user will get a login from this same page and they will only see the devices that you give them access to. So let's say you have a man, let's say you have two or three managers on a property and their own, each manager is only supposed to see specific doors. We can set it up that way. Or you want one manager to see every door. Whatever you share with them is what they can see. But we have full customization of that as well. So you can restrict what they see, what doors they see, what doors they can edit, all that stuff, all through the PAL portal. So it's very uh, easy to use and customizable. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and log in. And you'll see that this is extremely simple to use, okay? So this is our demo site here. It's going to ask you for your location. I'm not going to do it. And then I've got some options here uh, along the side. You can see dashboard, devices, places, users. You are going to live in the devices section. Every time you add, every device comes with a serial number and a code. You're going to go to devices and you're going to click on add device. I'm going to search for ours. Okay. You can see that I've added transmitter solutions demo. This is the unit that we have here. I'm going to click on that. I am now in administering and managing this device. One of the nice features that we have, I said that you can give admin rights to people that you want to give them to for certain devices is, let's say you have a property that has two units or a property that has four units or five units. They do not have to go into every individual device to add and delete and pull logs. We can create what's called places over here and we can call it ABC Apartments and then we can list all three devices that are on that property uh, in places and then when they add somebody it automatically pushes to all three. Or we can create two places and say ABC Apartments Gate 1 and 2, ABC Apartments Gate 3. And every time they add someone to that place, it just goes to that specific device. So you don't have to log into each one if you have multiple units on a property. It can be set up and managed to send once, and it's going to the exact device, PAL device that you want out in the field. Okay? So you can see that I'm in here. It maps your location. It tells you how many users you have. But the nice thing is there are only five options. And the, there's only two that your end user is going to use. I'll start in the settings here. So you can see that you can set, as the installer, you can set the, the relay time. You can set uh, who can see the information. So who can see and manage this device is set in this. You can set timer events, which means you can restrict access. So Quinn's only allowed in the front gate between 8 and 5. That, one of the really cool things is that whatever time you restrict them to, that applies to physical credentials, so transmitter, RFID card, whatever the physical credential is, but it also applies to the virtual credential. So if Quinn has a remote control and an app-based credential, if I'm only allowed in 8 to 5, my remote will only allow me in 8 to 5, and my phone app is only going to allow me 8 to 5. So it rolls over to everything that that user uses. Okay? Uh, time groups. Time groups is where you set the restrictions. So this would be office hours. Anyone in the office hours group in the users section, which I'll show you, would, would be restricted to these office hours. Timer events is the seven-day timer. This has a seven-day timer built into it. You can set as many of them as you want, so you can restrict. You can say, I want the gate to open at 7 a.m. and then the gate to automatically close at 5 p.m. That's in timer event. 
okay? The input is where you can manage uh, when it will send you an email if your gate or door has been open for a certain amount of time that you can set here. You can also get the current status of the gate or door. Remote control, this is something to keep in mind. We do, if you have sites that are worried about cloning of remotes, we sell a remote that goes with the, all of our PAL devices, except for the RFID, it goes with all the rest of them, the Wigan and the relay output ones, that cannot be cloned. So this PAL four button remote, it cannot be cloned. It doesn't have the numbers on it. It's actually a really nice looking remote. But you can keep that in mind. If you have customers that are really, really worried about security, we do sell a non-clonable remote, okay? And tools is where you can save information. So that's settings. Again, in the settings, you're able to set up seven day timers, set up groups to restrict access, and then you'll set those to users here in a minute. Um, change your relay output time, share with certain people who you want to be able to see, and if you have a remote control, you can set the numbers to open different relays, okay? Any questions on the settings? Okay, users. Users is where uh, your customers are gonna spend the majority of their time. So you can see here that you'll have a list of your users. This list you can import and you can export. So if, you are, if you're taking over and switching out an old access control system that allows you to pull a spreadsheet, you can import all of that information into our PAL system. It's really easy and we will help you. So if you're converting someone away from their old access control to PAL, we can help you with the import, but it is very simple. As long as you can get it in a spreadsheet, we can make it work for PAL. Okay, so keep that in mind. I'm gonna come up here to add. You can also see the import and export. And I'm gonna start adding the information. We'll add Alex. Alex, what's your phone number? Actually, we should probably just do a fake number. I don't want any of you guys trying to text Alex for tech support late at night. <laughs> Invalid phone number, I know. Uh, okay, so what? something interesting to keep in mind. The PAL unit comes with five free virtual credentials. That means with the PAL unit, they can administer, your customer can give out five virtual credentials, which means when they put in a phone number here, so I put in Alex's phone number, Alex will download the PAL app, it's called P-A-L-G-A-T-E. When he downloads the PAL gate, the first thing that pops up when Alex downloads the PAL gate app is a, is a little form. It says first name, last name, phone number. Alex puts in his first name, his last name, his phone number. The phone numbers sync up, some other information syncs up, and now the only thing that will show up, and I'll show you the app here in just a minute, on Alex's phone is the an icon for the gate that you have given him access to through this portal, okay? And I'll show you how that works here in just a minute. So I'm gonna save Alex's information. But because I've typed in Alex's phone number, I have assigned Alex a virtual credential. If I leave the phone number section blank, Alex doesn't have a virtual credential and he would need a physical credential to be allowed to get into the PAL system. You have five free virtual credentials. You can have as many virtual credentials as you want. The, after the first five, they do cost money. And again, they're inexpensive, uh, and it's a one-time fee, but we do charge for them. Uh, so you can have unlimited virtual credentials. Remote control serial number is for our PAL non-clonable remote. Again, those that are looking for higher security. Then this is where you're going to put in your Wigan information. So if you have a facility code, let's say it's like 077, if you don't, have, know the facility code, you can leave that blank, and let's say his Wigan serial number is 12345. Alex is only allowed in during office hours, and Alex is an admin. What that means is that on Alex's app, we've because we selected admin, we've just opened up a whole section in his app where he can go in and add users through his app, delete users, and run a report, all on his app. If we leave this box unchecked, the only thing that he'll see in his app is the icon to trigger this gate that we've given him access to during office hours. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. You can also do dial to open, okay, which means uh, if, if you want, you can put his phone number in here and then he can dial the phone number that's in this unit's SIM card and it will open the gate. So you're gonna save it as front gate, call it, 
it doesn't actually connect the call and it will trigger the gate and this is all reported in the log. Or no phone number because let's just say he's not going to have a phone number because he doesn't need a virtual credential and he's not going to dial to open. Okay? I'm not going to press save because it won't save because I have a fake number. Looks like we have a question. For what virtual, for virtual credentials, can you register for more than one gate or community if you are an installer on the app? I think I understand the question. So what you can do is, the way virtual credentials work is if you have, and tell me if this doesn't answer your question, if you have three PAL units on one community and you add Alex, you will add, Alex's virtual credential, you don't have to buy a virtual credential for each PAL unit on that property. You only have to buy one virtual credential and it will work at each of the gates that they're allowed in on that property. Now, if Alex is, lives in a complex that has PAL and has a virtual credential there, and then goes to a gym that has PAL, he would need two different virtual credentials because those places are not related in any way. But if you have three, four, five, 10, 20, 30 PALs on one community opening different doors, all Alex needs is one virtual credential. It's like a card. As long as he has that card or this virtual credential, he can scan it at any door. Whatever door you've given his virtual credential to on the property, he will be allowed to get in. Does that answer the question? It's a little bit of a lag, so I'll wait. If it doesn't, just let me know, but you only need one virtual credential per user per community, no matter how many PAL units they have. Okay? So you'd click save. I'm going to click cancel because it won't let me because I made up a fake phone number. His information would pop up. Good. Okay, I think we answered the question. Alex is giving me the thumbs up or the middle finger. I couldn't really tell. Uh, and you'll see the information of the person you've added. You can see if, they've, if you've added them as an administrator, it will show up here. And you can always export and import this information. Now, if I was in a place, which we've talked about, and again, we're not going to go into tons of detail. This is kind of just a high view of how this works. I could add Quinn, and if Quinn was part of a place that had three PAL units connected to it, that information would send automatically to all three PAL units. Okay? So again, super simple. Then the last thing that the customer is going to use is the log. The log, and this is empty because this is a test unit, the log is going to show you who opened the gate at what time, on what date, and with what device. So it's going to either tell you if it's a Wigan device, or if it's the phone, or if they dialed to open. It differentiates those so they're able to tell what happened. So uh, if someone came in, we had, we had a, a customer actually who had this on a pool gate, and there was some problems at the pool gate, and they had to, there's some problems at the pool, there's some vandalism, and so they had to come back here in the log and they were able to tell who triggered the gate and let the people in that vandalized it because it's time and date stamped and it showed exactly what kind of device it was. Another question. Uh, can you explain dial to open? Yeah. Dial to open is another form of a virtual credential. You put their phone number in, let's jump back there. If you put the phone number in there, okay, and then it was, again, I'll just make up a fake number. If you put the phone number in there and then you click dial to open, it's giving me an error because, again, it's a fake phone number. That means that this user, let's say it was Alex, can dial the phone number that is associated with this device, which I'll show you where that's located so you can always find it. It's located right here. Okay, it looks like a fake number, but it is in fact a real number. They can dial that number, and if you've selected dial to open, when they call that number, it will trigger the relay on the PAL unit. Another kind of a cool feature. They can drive up, call it, it will let them in, or they, if they've been given access, they can use the app. Okay, got another question? Um, can an installer have access to all of his sites with one credential for him? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, for sure. That's a really good question. So, yeah, so the question was, can an installer have one virtual credential for all of his sites? We will only do that for installers, not management of a property, not anything like, not like that. If, if there's a manager, they're going to need to buy one for each community. They're inexpensive. But installers and your techs, yes, we will do that. You just need to call us and say, hey, Quinn, I've got four properties that I put PAL on, can you give me a, let's just create a virtual credential that'll work on all of them. 
definitely. And then what will happen, and let me actually show you on this camera. What will happen is, let's see if, in your app, what you'll see, and I'm going to try to, I don't know which camera I'm looking at here. Okay, you can see a list of all the gates I have access to right here. So you will, you or your customer or whoever it is will see every access point and all they do is push the button. Once they push the button, I'm, I'm trying to, I don't know which ones of these are real and not, so I'm not going to go crazy. But all I do is push the button and it will say opening gate, gate open, and it's done. It's that easy. Okay, so you'll have a virtual credential for each of your sites, but yes, we can do that. That's a really good question. Another question. Uh, so five virtual credentials given per pal, 10 pals on site give 50 users at no additional cost? Sorry, say, say that again. So if you get five virtual credentials um, and you have 10 pals on I, Okay, I get the question. So the question is, so I mentioned earlier, and again, these are really good questions. These will help you in the bidding process. The question is, I told you you get five free virtual credentials with a PAL system. So if you buy two PAL systems, there'd be five in device one and five in device two. The way that the software works, so they're saying if I install 10 of them on a property, technically I get 50 free virtual credentials. Technically, yes, but that's not how the software works. We can tell, and we would hope through honesty you could too. Let's turn this into an honesty conversation. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The, the way, the, because we map it out, if you have 10 on one property, you still only have five free virtual credentials. It's like we sent you a box of five, five free cards. Those virtual credentials can work on every single PAL unit, but you don't get five per PAL on the same property. Okay, So you'd get five, and then you'd have to buy more for the other people, because then it's called a place. It's a location. It's a physical installed site. Now, with that, going off that example a little bit, let's say you order 10 PAL units, one PAL goes on property number one, one PAL goes on property number two, all the way up to property number 10, and they are all different. Each one of those PALs has five free virtual credentials as long as they're each on different properties, sites, jobs, whatever term you want to use. Does that answer the question? Good, really good question though, because that's, that's one of the things that with virtual credentials, that's kind of how they work, is you have to be careful how you parse them, because the virtual credential in, big, in installs with more than one PAL is not tied to the PAL, it's tied to the site. So that that virtual credential can get you in every single door that that person has access to. Is that all we have? Okay. So again, you can see the software. The greatest thing about it, I, I wish I could sit here and tell you all of the examples we've had where installers have won jobs with the PAL unit because they're able to install so inexpensive with so much feature and functionality on jobs where they've been using old, outdated stuff, or not even old, outdated stuff, where they're going and they're plugging in their computer to an access control panel and updating information. You don't have to do this. And, this, and with the cellular connectivity connecting you to the cloud and the cost, I'm telling you, when you hear the cost of these things, you'll be blown away. They are so inexpensive, so much less expensive than everything out there. So you're going to win price-wise every job that you bid. Again, the benefits, you have cloud-based access control with physical, any type of Wigan physical credential you can think of will work on this. We sell a PAL with an RFID. If you don't want the PAL RFID, which let me tell you now, it's the best RFID system I've seen. It's so reliable, it works really good and the price on it's really good. But if you, for some reason, don't want to go PAL RFID, you can buy the PAL Wigan and you can tie in a, any RFID, Wigan RFID reader to the PAL Wigan. So any virtual credentials, or excuse me, any physical credentials and virtual credentials and mix and match and the software allows us to do whatever we want. You can call me at any time and say, I just had a guy on the phone with me this morning. We've got a question here in just a minute that said, Quinn, I have this site. Help me break this down. We, we broke it down. We connected who needed to go to who. And once you see it once, it's really easy. Question. Is there a monthly cost for the cellular connection? It, the question is, is there a monthly cost for the cellular connection? <coughs> excuse me. The answer is yes, but we don't charge monthly. We charge for the entire year. It's an annual bill, and I can tell you it's next to nothing. We don't talk price again, but it is very, very, very inexpensive. Call your sales rep for pricing. It's not like these fees you're seeing for telephone entry because there's no voice, uh, and it's very little data. So if you're used to installing cellular-based telephone entry, the fees are nowhere near that because it's just a, it's a pretty simple device but it allows you to connect anywhere. And you think about, I mean, if you step back and think about it, this is what I pitch to guys all day. 
The cost of putting one of these at a front gate or a door or an overhead door, sticking it in there, getting power to it, control wire and run, running, walking away, <coughs> the price of that install versus, okay, I have to get a, in a, uh, an expensive access control. I'm going to have to trench network wire. You have to give me a static IP or I need a network to plug into. Or if you want to do away with the wire, you can install a wireless device. Those costs add up. The cost of, the co I can tell you this, the cost of wireless devices out in the market right now that would, that would allow you to get rid of wire are more expensive than the PAL altogether. That should really help. The cost of that one device to help you pass wireless is more than the PAL unit is. Okay? Any, any other questions? Hopefully this has been beneficial. I've been 34 minutes. I like to keep it to 30 minutes. But again, if you haven't tried one, you should. They are really, really simple to use. They're going to make you look like the hero. And I promise you there's pretty much no application this won't work on. And you can, you can choose whatever physical credentials you want. This is just the brains behind it. Okay? We've posted the link in the chat box. Please click on that, fill it out, and we're choosing a winner of the PAL unit on Monday. So you think. Here's the best part about it. If we, never, we can pretend we announced it and no one ever won. We're not like that, though, going back to the honesty conversation. Are users entered per unit or per site? The question is, are users entered per unit or per site? It depends on the installation. If you have more than one PAL installed at a site, well, let, let me answer this way. You can choose. Typically, if you have more than one PAL, let's say a front gate and a back gate PAL, they're going to combine those into a site, and then users are added to a site, which automatically pushed every PAL device in that site. If you just buy one, then it's the unit. Okay, so we can mix and match that as well. We have one site, <clears throat> we have one site with 18 of these on them, and they have one site, and they go in and they put in Quinn Covert, it pushes to all 18. That same site, you could say, well, I want one manager to add people for gates 1 through 10 and one manager to add people, people in gates 11 through 18. Two sites, they manage and it pushes out to the specific devices. Good question. What we'll do, we're going to stick around for questions. Please fill out that link so that you can enter to win a free PAL and then let me know any questions we can answer. We're going to stick around and read them in the chat. Thank you so much for your time. We really do appreciate it. And this product, stand behind 100%. It works Awesome. We've had no issues with them whatsoever. Thanks, guys.